So lately I've been addicted to making fractal animations and I've been playing around with this program called J Wildfire to do this. Now, I think personally this is a severely underrated program. You can get some really complex geometry within minutes, just with a few clicks, honestly. So as it's an introduction to the program, for anyone who doesn't know how to use it, I'm just gonna be going over the basics of the interface and how, how it sort of works. What you see here is the viewport. So this is your object. You, you should see something like this. The minute you open the program, it's gonna automatically generate what's called a fractal flame, which is essentially a fractal pattern in three, three dimensional space. It's essentially geometry created for a bunch of complex math formulas that I don't personally understand, but all you need to know is that gives you really cool trippy designs like this. But once you first open a program, it will generate something random for you. Over here, these are called thumbnails. Essentially are project files within your project. They're saved in memory. These things, you can actually open them. Once you close the project, you will lose access to them. Basically what they're used for is, so say you've got this scene here, you can basically change a few bits within the scene. And then you can, what you can do is go over here to click snapshot and it will create a copy of the of the scene that you have in the viewport so it's good for like making edits and then having like a copy of what you just made and then just sort of rehashing loads of different ideas so you want to use this snapshot button here to do that but like i said these will not actually save these are just sort of stored in memory so when you close the program you're going to lose these so let's start by creating a random batch because these ones that we got first they're not actually that great so what you can do you can just click here to random batch and what that's going to do is first of all, it's going to erase all the thumbnails that you already had. So uh, if you have something that you like, it's going to lose that. Sorry. But it's okay because there's so many, the, the way you can just generate uh, new stuff with ease, uh, it's not really that important. But yeah, just something to know. If you do have a design that you like and you hit that, it's going to delete it. But what it's done is it's created a bunch of new ones for us. And we can just go through these and see if there's anything that we like. So this one's quite cool. I'm going to click on this one. And as you can see, we've got, you see these things here. These are your transform controls. So what you see here is what you see here on the right, where it says transformations. These are basically control points of your 3D objects. So if you click here, you can start dragging this to sort of move your scene around. And yeah, so say I like this, now I can save a snapshot of that. And yeah, it's created a new snapshot. So I've got this one here. And now when I start making changes to this one, you'll see I've got my old one here and the new one there. You can click any one you want. We can do the red one. This is really cool, this one. If you do like what you've got, it's worth noting in J Wildfire, you don't save it as you normally would. Like normally you go file, save your project. That's not really how it works. Instead you save what's called flames. So the flame is essentially the project file that you're working in. So say you've got something that you like here. I like this one. So I'm gonna go over here to save flame. So just click on this, save flame. I find it's best to set up a folder in your root directory just for J Wildfire, just because by default it opens this documents folder and you don't really want to have somewhere too deep in your file structure just because it's not, this thing is not really the best to navigate in, like you can't search or anything. So uh, I would save somewhere quite close to your root directory and we'll save this JW0002 tutorial flame. So now that we've saved that, let's say I make changes to this. So I've made these big changes here. I can just go load flame, just navigate to where you saved it now. Big drive. So I've got that J wildfire flame. I'll just load that. So now that's basically saving your project. So now we have access to that all the time. So if I close J wildfire, I'll be able to open that file again. Whereas these, like I said, these are just sort of like snapshots within the file. So yeah, let's say you want to animate this. So what you want to do is go over here, this bit here, this is your timeline. You can activate that and deactivate it by clicking this button here. So that'll bring it up and hide it. And it's quite a simple timeline. There's not really that much functionality on here. What you need to know here is the frame count is how many frames within the sequence. So that's hundred frames. So we're going to change that to 300. And then if you want to animate it, all you got to do is click on one of these control points. We'll go with the red one. So click on the red control point. And over here, this is what you see here is, is related to what you see here. So we've got our red transform selected and over here are the transforms. If I click on this now, if I click anywhere in here with the red one selected, you'll notice these numbers start changing, right? So you can drag it around. Or alternatively, you can scroll your mouse in and that's pushing it into like Z space. So for me, I find with J Wildfire, less is more when you're working with animations in this. So I'll try to keep your animations simple, to be honest. The main things I would do 
when I'm animating is either just animate one of these control points or alternatively uh, just animate over here you've got your camera so you could just animate like the zoom or something like that so you like you're zooming in that's kind of how I would do the animations just because I've been playing around with the program for a while now and I haven't found like an intuitive sort of keyframe editor that you can play with there's like a graph editor where you can uh, change the interpolation of the keyframes but I don't think it's very intuitive to be honest so I'll just keep the animation simple so what I'm going to do is just I'm going to key in a quick animation of this red one this red transform I'm going to key it basically scrolling in so what I'm going to do I'm going to go to the first frame here I'm going to go over to here I'm going to add a keyframe for each one of these so apply and close click that apply and close that apply and close apply and close just, you want to do it for all of these transform properties because when you start moving it it actually will affect most of them so if you don't add a keyframe for all of them uh, your animation might not look how you expect it to look so with those ones added we're going to go to the last frame now so just click this bit here next to the playhead go to, that takes you to frame frame 300 and we're going to just scroll this up just so it does that so it's sort of like growing this may not look the same on your scene it really depends on the generation of the fractals so you may want to play with uh, different things so that's our animation there so we'll just leave it about there and now let's watch it so it's worth noting once you've added the keyframe and you move to a second position in the timeline you don't need to add the keyframes again it will just automatically add keyframes when you move the parameter so i've scrolled this up at frame 300 i don't need to add the keyframes now that's automatically added all those keyframes for me so let's watch that animation now so you see we're getting this sort of growth effect now and like i said it might look a bit different on yours because it really does uh, depend on the, the the type of flame that's in the scene that's a simple animation there i'm also going to add a little zoom effect so there's two ways to zoom you can use the zoom on the camera or you can use the pixels per unit i like to use the pixels per unit i feel like it gives you a better resolution when it renders i may be wrong about that but um it's just the results seem to look a bit better for me when i do that when i have a bit of a lower zoom and then up the pixels per unit so i'm going to add a keyframe on the pixels per unit on the first frame, apply and close, and then I'm gonna go to the last frame now. I'm just gonna push this up a bit to about here, and that's gonna be my animation now. Really simple. And if you are wanting your animation to loop, if you wanted to do a, a like a zoom in, zoom out effect, you could just change this frame count to 600. So we're extending the frames, and those keyframes should retain in at 300. And then we'll go on to the first frame. And over here, you've got this option called duplicate keyframe we'll select that set the destination frame to 600 what that should have done is duplicated all the keyframes to 600 but it seems like it hasn't done that so um i'll just go to the end frame and i'm just going to copy this uh pixels per unit figure and i'm going to put that at the end as well that should be a loop so if you hit play um it should zoom in back and forth now it is quite hard to get good loops with this program i found just one thing you'll notice is the interpolation isn't great this is where i find the program quite annoying to work with you can change the interpolation here you what you can do is you can add a point um, and then control the curves here but i've just found it doesn't really work how you expect it to and it's and you have to do this for each keyframe as well so i don't think it's great to be honest so yeah i'm going to cancel that but yeah, if you did want to loop, that's how you would do it. I'm going to save that flame. So we've got our animation. Now let's render it out. So if you want to render your animation, there's multiple ways you can do it. The first is you can just render it here. Problem with this one though, is that it doesn't utilize your GPU. So you can just use it here. You just click render, save it somewhere where you want the render to go. This method will just render a still frame. But if you wanted to render a full animation, you need to create a new folder. We'll call this JW0002 test. And what you do, you just go here and you call it what you want it. So if you do that, that will just save a still frame. If you want to uh, render it as an animation, you just append to MP4 at the end. And then you just hit save and it will render it out. But like I said, this way, I don't think it's the best way because it doesn't utilize your GPU. So it will take longer to render. JWildfire is technically better on your CPU just because you get more options like there's some scenes that actually don't you can't render with your gpu and also some scenes may look a bit different when you render them on your gpu like the colors may be changing a bit uh just because it's it's not a lot of the gpu rendering just isn't built for the program but with that drawback is you end up having much longer render times 
So I prefer to use the GPU when I can, but this method doesn't let you use the GPU. So if you wanted to do it like that, that's fine. You can just um, render like that and it will render out. You just hit save and it will automatically convert it to MP4. One other thing I wanted to note is if it's looking noisy in the viewport, you can click here and this will render like an image. It will render it within the viewport for you. So you, you can see how it's gonna look. And then you can use optics denoiser here as well, which will get rid of some of the noise in the scene. Yeah, like I was saying, J Wildfire, it's sort of designed to run on CPU. A lot of the flames are sort of designed that way. So you see if I enable the GPU here and then I render, it may look a bit different to how it would on the CPU. So you look at getting a bit a bit different sort of look. So yeah, that's just one thing to note. But if you I still think it's better to render with the GPU if you can, because it will save you a lot of time. So if you wanted to render on GPU, I find the best way is to save your flame. That's important. You need to save your flame first. So you need to save it after you've done all the animations. So we'll save that again. Save your flame again after you've done all your keying for your animations and go over to Windows, Batch Renderer. This is just a better way of rendering. So add flames, locate your, your flame file and then import that. With this renderer, if you have multiple designs, you can batch them. So you can just batch render these. And then over here on render animation, you need to set that to one. If you don't set it to one, it's just gonna render a still frame. So make sure you set that to one. Over here is where you can change your resolution. I'm gonna do it as a 2K resolution and I'm gonna disable the denoiser. Leave the GPU checked because that's why we're using this batch renderer and then just hit render. And now that's gonna render your animation. Just so you know, it will automatically put the file where your flame is saved. So if we go to our J wildfire folder, you'll see now we're getting all of these uh, renders coming through. So what it's doing, it's rendering in image sequences first, and then it will automatically convert it to MP4 once it's done. If you want to keep it as a PNG sequence, just stop the render process once it gets to about 90%. The last stage of the rendering process is it encoding into an MP4 file. So if you cancel that batch once you get to your last frame, uh, then you should be able to keep all the image sequences. If you don't, then it will automatically convert to MP4 and it will delete all of the original image files. Uh, just something to note. So there you go. That's your first animation in J Wildfire. And like I said, with animation, just keep things simple in this program because I've tried to do complex stuff with it and I found the more complex I make it, the harder it is to uh, get right. It starts like things, just the keyframe editor. I don't, maybe I just don't know how to use it very well, but I found, I don't find, think it's the best to work in, to be honest. So yeah, if I do find a better way of working with it, I will make another tutorial, but at the moment I haven't worked it out. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you find value in my work. And if you want to check out more of my work, you can find all that at nebmotion.co.uk.